Okay, so here is our last video for our lipids and lipoproteins lecture. So here particularly we are going to talk about the lipoprotein function. So we talked about different classes of lipoproteins. Now we are going to see exactly how they are going to function. Okay, so it's really important for you guys to absolutely understand the lipoprotein function this year from this lecture because next year we will be touching on hyperlipidemia and atherosclerosis when we are studying about cardiovascular disease in too much detail. So we will not go through all these details again next year. So we will straight away jump into the pathological conditions. So please make sure that you understand this year and if you don't understand, please ask me. So I did put stepwise you know, the stepwise information about the lipoprotein function for all different types of lipoproteins here. You can go through all the points and the images are also extremely helpful in understanding the concepts about this lipoprotein function. OK, so first we are going to talk about the chylomicron function. So as I said before in the previous video, chylomicrons are formed in intestine and they carry our exogenous fat particularly triacylglycerol and cholesterol, whatever comes from food and subsequent digestion, they're going to take these molecules and supply to the tissues. So that's what we're going to study here to see exactly what's happening here. So basically a chyme will enter into small intestine. So that's basically a mixture of gastric juice and partially digested food from the stomach. So that's called a chyme that will enter into the small intestine. The first part is first part of small intestine is duodenum. OK, so when the chyme enters into the duodenum, it will induce the release of bile. So bile is really important. It's a bile juice. It's produced from the liver. So when the chyme enter into the duodenum, it will induce the release of bile and the digestive enzymes. It will include importantly lipase enzyme or lipase enzyme, whatever you want to call it. And then most importantly, the bicarbonate buffer. That's important to neutralize the pH because as you know, stomach pH is an acidic. So when it comes to small intestine for complete digestion and absorption, it has to come into neutral pH. So the bicarbonate will come from pancreas and it will neutralize the pH. So this is all happening in the duodenum. So in the duodenum, when the chyme enters, we are getting digestive enzymes, bile from liver and then the pancreas. So all these things are coming here. The digestive enzymes are also coming from pancreas. OK, so now the fat droplets will be formed normally. OK, after it's mixing with gastric juice, you will have lots of gas, uh, the fat droplets. And these fat droplets, because of their non-polar in nature, they can aggregate. They can aggregate, you know, they can make some sort of like um, simple aggregates. And these aggregates are really difficult to digest by the enzymes because enzymes are hydrolytic in nature. They are hydrophilic, so they can't really access these fat molecules. They can't bind to this fat molecule. So this is where all the bile salts are coming in. So the bile coming from the liver. So these salts will stick to the surface of the fat droplets. OK, by sticking to the surface of fat droplets, they make some form of emulsion. So it will have a non-polar core and then the fat bile salts, they are hydrophilic in nature partially, so they will stick to the surface. So because of this type of emulsion structure now, the pancreatic lipase enzyme can access these molecules and digest. OK, so these pancreatic lipase molecules or accessing the emulsion that are formed with the help of bile salts can be accessed and digested. So when they digest these molecules, OK, lipase, when it's breaking the triacylglycerols, it will release the free fatty acids, or monoglycerides and glycerol. OK, so we know the tags are glycerol molecule with the three fatty acids. Now the lipase is cleaving that ester linkage and releasing free fatty acids or monoglyceride, for example, glycerol molecule with just one fatty acid or just a completely free glycerol. Similarly, the cholesterol esters, whatever we are eating, will be digested as well. So the free fatty acid will be liberated from the cholesterol ester and therefore cholesterol will be liberated separately. OK, so try to understand here. So lipids droplets on its own cannot be digested by pancreatic lipids. So we need bile salt. 
So the bile salts are binding to the lipid droplets and making them more accessible to hydrolytic enzymes because they are hydrophilic in nature. Now the lipase enzyme is coming and digesting these molecules and releasing free fatty acids or monoglycerides or glycerol molecules, similarly digesting cholesterol esters into cholesterol and free fatty acids. Now, these molecules will go inside the intestinal mucosa or intestinal epithelium. So free fatty acids, because they are hydrophilic, sorry, hydrophobic in nature, they can simply diffuse through the membrane, plasma membrane, and they will come inside. Similarly, cholesterol need a transporter because they can't go through easily through the plasma membrane. So they will go through a special channels, cholesterol channels. So all the molecules, the digested molecules, free fatty acids and cholesterol, everything is inside now, inside the intestinal mucosa or intestinal epithelial cells. Now here, so these molecules, these free fatty acids are going to endoplasmic reticulum and then they are resynthesized as triacylglycerols. Okay, so cholesterol, as I said, it's sorry, it's cholesterol, as I said, it's going through transporter and it's coming inside the cell. So now the fatty acid, free fatty acids are converted into triglycerides, cholesterol also, also inside, and this intestinal epithelial cells is producing protein, apolipoprotein necessary to form the chylomicrons. Okay, now all these molecules will join together, okay, and form chylomicrons. OK, so you got cholesterol, you got triacylglycerides and upper proteins necessary to form the chylomicrons and all of them joining together and they made chylomicrons. That's a type of lipoproteins that's going to transport the exogenous fat across the tissues. Now, this has to go out of the intestinal epithelium. So they will use Golgi apparatus because Golgi apparatus is a cell organelle that's important for exocytosis. So with the help of Golgi apparatus, they will come inside, sorry, go outside. It's a process called exocytosis. So it will come outside now. So now it's in the interstitial fluid and here, because the chylomicrons are really big in size, around one micron, they can't enter into the blood capillaries because the blood capillary pores are really small. So therefore they have to use the lymphatic system because they do have bigger pores. So they will enter into the lymphatic system. So through the lymphatic system, they will go to the thoracic duct and enter into the subclavian vein. That's how they are entering into the bloodstream. OK, so these are the simple processes happening during the lipid digestion and the packaging of the chylomicrons in the intestinal epithelium and then they enter into the lymphatic vessel and then finally it's reaching into the thoracic duct and opening into the bloodstream. So this is a transport of chylomicrons. OK, what's happening here? after they come into the bloodstream. So as I said, this is intestine. They formed here coming through the lymphatic vessel and then opening up here in the subclavian vein in the thoracic duct and then entering into the bloodstream. Now, so apoprotein C2 present on this uh, chylomicrons, they will activate the lipoprotein lipase enzyme in capillaries. So when it comes to the tissues in the target tissues, the capillary enzyme, the lipoprotein lipase will digest these things and then release fatty acids and the glycerol from tag and it will supply to muscles and adipose tissues. OK, so this is how the free fatty acids are entering into the muscles in mu muscle. It will get metabolized in order to produce the energy. So we will talk about this in more detail in lipid metabolism lecture. Similarly, the glycerol and excess amount of fatty acid will go to adipocytes and that's where they will get packed again into tag and it will be stored. OK, so the chylomicron carrying all the fat from our food after the digestion. Now it's supplying to the muscle. So the muscle will utilize to make the energy and the rest of the material will be stored in the adipocytes. OK, and the remnant chylomicrons will go to liver and then it will get destroyed. So what's happening in VLDL, IDL, LDL situation? So as I said before, in order to meet the body demand, liver will also produce more tag and cholesterol. So these will be packed in the form of very low density lipoproteins. So it will have a lot of cholesterol and a lot of fatty acids in the form of tag. Okay, so now it's the same mechanism will apply. 
when it comes to the target tissues, the lipoprotein lipase will activate and release the free fatty acids and the glycerol here. And similarly, cholesterol as well, because cholesterol is also important for every single cell type. So they will supply all these molecules over there. So initially it's supplying all the fatty acids. So by supplying all the fatty acid to the muscle or adipocytes, it's becoming smaller in size. So when it's becoming smaller in size, it's becoming intermediate density lipoproteins, and that will also continue to supply the molecules to the tissues, and some of them will go back to liver and recycled in the form of ELDL again. So after supplying large amount of fatty acids, it's got tons of cholesterol cholesterol, then it's becoming LDL. Okay, That's what is called low density lipoproteins. So the low density lipoproteins now need to supply the cholesterol to the target tissues. So this is where it comes into the target tissues, bind to the LDL receptors and then get endocytosed. So through the mechanism called endocytosis, it's going inside. In the, when, it's, when they are inside the cells, this endocytosis mechanism will release the endosome just this molecule and the small amount of plasma membrane and all the receptors will be recycled. All the LDL receptors will go back to the surface to collect more LDL molecules. Now the endosome will fuse with lysosomes. That's another hydrolytic organ within our cell and that will break up all the fatty acids, free cholesterol and use it for the membrane. OK, any excess amount will be formed in the form of droplet and it will be ready to picked up by HDL molecule. So this is what is happening. So the rest of the LDL molecule will go back to liver and get recycled. So this is why it's really important to maintain the LDL level in the bloodstream. We don't want any elevated LDL level in the bloodstream. It has to be in the required quantity. It should not be more. OK, so when they come to plasma, they have to go and supply the molecule and then get away. So this is an important process here. OK, the last one is the last type of lipoproteins is HDL. So HDL is doing reverse cholesterol transport. So basically it's collecting the excess amount of cholesterol from the target tissues and then it will take them all to liver in order to get metabolized. So that's what the HDL is doing. So we'll talk about that in more detail here. So I believe it's really clear so far. Chylomicrons, exogenous fat, it's coming and supplying to all the tissues for energy, particularly muscle, and then the excess amount is going to adipocytes for storage, and the remnants will go to liver in order to get destroyed or metabolized. Okay, And the endogenous fat coming in the form of VLDL, from the liver and it's supplying all the fatty acids at the beginning to muscles and for storage and they are becoming smaller in size. So finally they will be in the form of LDL. When it comes to this stage it's got a huge amount of cholesterol and the LDLs do have receptors in the target cell types and in the liver so they can go to receptor mediated endocytosis process in order to release their contents. OK, and these contents are utilized by the cell and excess amount of cholesterol will be on the surface in the form of cavioli or small deposits and that's where the HDL comes. So the predominant role of HDL is the reverse cholesterol transport. So it comes in and collect all the excess amount of cholesterol from the target cells and then take them to liver in order to get metabolized. OK, so let's talk about the HDL reverse transport in a little bit more detail. So first, the upper A1 protein, that's the upper protein present on the uh, HDL, will be synthesized mainly from the liver and some amount will be coming from intestine as well. So this upper A1 protein, it doesn't have any lipid molecule, it's just a protein. So now this will collect a small amount of cholesterol from this ABCA1 receptor or transporter molecule in the target cells. Here we are showing a blood vessel. Okay, so this molecule, this transporter molecule will supply all the cholesterol from the lipid droplet or from the excess amount of uh, cholesterol present on the membrane. So this upper A1 will collect a small amount of cholesterol and free cholesterol mostly and it will form a nascent HDL or juvenile HDL. OK, so this is what is happening here. So this is where an enzyme comes in. That enzyme called lecithin cholesterol acetyl transferase. This enzyme will basically esterify the free cholesterol because it's collecting more lots of free cholesterols. And these cholesterols will be esterified using 
fatty acids. So when they get esterified, immediately they are becoming non-polar in nature. Therefore, they are getting inside. So when they get inside, they are becoming more mature HDL because when they go inside, it can pack a large amount of cholesterol ester inside because it's a non-polar core. So it's packing large amount. Therefore, it's becoming mature HDL. So when it's becoming mature HDL, it's collecting more and more cholesterol through other channels. These channels are called ABCG1 and SRB1. From the target cells, it's collecting as much as possible and then becoming highly mature HDL. So now it's got a huge amount of cholesterol ester inside and a small amount of free cholesterol in the membrane because that's the normal nature of lipoproteins. Okay, so now it collected everything. Now it has to deliver all of this to the liver. So in order to deliver to the liver, it's using two mechanisms here. One is a direct mechanism. The other one is indirect mechanisms. Okay, the direct mechanism means all this mature HDL will go to liver and it will bind to another channel called SRB1 channel and then just to open up all the cholesterol esters inside the liver and the liver will utilize all of these for bile production and excretion. So that's a direct method of delivery of the cholesterol esters from directly from HDL into the liver. And then there is another mechanism that's an indirect mechanism. So that's mainly facilitated through a protein called cholesterol ester transfer protein. OK, so this protein CETP cholesterol ester transfer protein. It's basically supplying some fatty acids from the VLDL molecule or LDL molecule to the HDL. OK, so using this HDL, so use, using these free fatty acids, it's esterifying more and more molecules. So then this cholesterol ester transfer protein is exchanging this cholesterol ester into VLDL or LDL molecules. So it's basically giving some fatty acids and getting the cholesterol ester and some free cholesterols as well. So that's what this protein is facilitating. Basically, it's collecting excess cholesterol from mature HDL and taking into the LDL or VLDL. Okay, so now because we the LDL got LDL receptors in the liver and the target cell types, it can go and supply this cholesterol into liver and the target cell types. So when it comes to liver, it will bind to LDL receptor as I showed in the previous picture. Immediately the endocytosis process will kickstart. So they will go inside and release all the cholesterol. Again, liver will utilize all the cholesterol here. So this is what you need to remember here for reverse cholesterol transport mediated by HDLs. So it's normally synthesized as just a protein either from liver or intestine and this upper protein will go to the target tissues. For example, here macrophages or endothelial cells or smooth muscle cells. It will collect the excess amount of cholesterol and becoming a juvenile or a nascent HDL. So it will have a small amount of esterified cholesterol, but large amount of free cholesterol on the surface. So here one enzyme called lecithin cholesterol, sorry, lecithin cholesterol acetyl transferase. This enzyme, lecithin cholesterol acetyl transferase enzyme. So that enzyme is basically converting this into cholesterol esters and free cholesterol into cholesterol esters. So when it's becoming free esterified cholesterol, they are getting inside. So when they're getting inside, they are becoming mature HDL. Now the mature HDL can deliver the cholesterol to liver through two pathways. One is direct pathway that's facilitated through SRB1 channel and then indirect pathway that's facilitated through LDLs with the help of protein called cholesterol ester transfer protein. OK, that's the mechanism. OK, so that's the main thing about lipids and lipoproteins. So the summary for this lecture, so basically fats play major roles in the body as energy source, components of cell membrane, thermoregulators, and the source for hormone synthesis and vitamin D synthesis. So fatty acids normally formed as tank, which act as energy supplies. So okay, they are more mainly stored in the adipocytes as well. Phospholipids play a major role in the formation of lipid bilayer membrane, cell membrane, because it's got a polar head and the inner non-polar surface. Sphingolipids play major roles in neuronal cell functions. Steroids are divided of fatty acids, but they act as 
really precursors for steroid hormones. So cholesterol is involved in several biological pathways, including steroid hormone synthesis and vitamin D synthesis. Lipoproteins are important cargo molecules, and that's what is going to transport the lipids around the body. The functions of lipoproteins are tightly controlled and therefore any dysregulation to their functions will lead into cardiovascular diseases. And HDL is an important player in the lipid transport mechanism because that's what is doing a reverse cholesterol transport and it's basically collecting excess amount of cholesterol from the peripheral tissues and taking them to the liver in order to get metabolized. OK, I hope you enjoyed this lecture. And if there are any doubts, please feel free to send me an email and I'm happy to answer. And we do have a tutorial session as well, and I'm happy to go through the questions you have during the tutorial session. So thank you so much, and I will meet you in the next lecture.